in this race, Romania, Australia, Great Britain, Canada, Netherlands and the United States of America. So there they are, the Romanians from Bao to stroke Tiganescu, Semichuk, Artimi, Adam, Kozmiuk, Bayan, Barairu, stroke Lahatchi, Cox, Mutaneu. In lane two, it is the Australians, Lavery, brothers up in the bows, Yule, Cannon, Whittacombe, Hardy, O'Shaughnessy, stroked by Jackson Kench, Kendall Brody with the rudder lines in the Cox's seat. Great Britain, we saw them preparing earlier in the coffee bar, huddled down, Rory Gibbs, Bolding, Buick Copley, Carnegie, Elwes, Digby, Rudkin, stroked by Tom Ford, Harry Brightmore from Oxford Brooks in the Cox's seat. Here's this marvellous Canadian aide, Gadsden King, Amos Clegg, Crothers, Bean, Lancashire, Buzek, He's the stroke man, Laura Court, in the Cox's seat. In lane five, it's the Netherlands. Nicky van Sprang in the bow seat. Uh, van Leroy, Biesma, van de Kirchhoff, Mantel, Maka, Molly, Kromenhock, and Doikofeta. She is holding the rudder lines for the Netherlands. The Americans, Karoski, Russia, Klaffer, Corrigan, Nippon, Gard, Carlson, Stroke, Peter Quinton, and James. Catalano holding the rudder lines for the American team. Well, it goes quiet momentarily on the start line before it all goes mad. The light goes green and everyone takes off. We unsurprisingly pick up with this British eight. It's a steady looking takeoff really from them. Very controlled they've been all year. That's the way they tend to row and it looked controlled off the start and it's got them pretty well in the middle of the field. If you look anywhere, it's probably the top of the field. It's probably the Romanians who've got a tiny little lead. It's the crew in lane two, Australia slightly behind, but a very even start. Yeah, very controlled start there for the British. They're one of the lower rating crews on the course already down at 41, whereas most of the other crews are up in the mid to high 40s. But it just shows you how much rhythm and power they have because they're right in there. As we ride here with the Australian men's eight, this young crew, the two 23-year-olds, Jackson Kench and Will O'Shaughnessy in the stern pair. It is Britain leading the way as we pass through the 300 metres just coming up to the minute where the Coxes will shout a kick on to the crews. Generally have a call in the minute. These Romanians doubling up in this event. What will it have cost them in their legs as Britain lead out from the Australians to their left and to their right? The Canadians had that marvellous throw in the heat. The Netherlands, we know what their last 1,000 metres will be like. What will they bring to this race? Well, we know this one's just going to fly along. They're through the 500 metres already. The British have got that small lead just inside at 1 minute 20. It's pretty fast at 119 through 500. The rest of the field still pretty much you could just throw a line straight across them. We're riding with the Netherlands there in the stroke seats. It is Guillaume Kromenhock. Beautiful rhythm. That elbow sticking out at the back end of the stroke, isn't it, from Guillaume Kromenhock? just leading his crew through. They had a fantastic last thousand in the Europeans. What will they bring to this race today? So the British with a canvas lead over the Australian 700 metres in this young new outfit from Australia, coached by Mark Prater. But the British, they have been the inform crew all week. But we thought maybe we'd see more of a challenge from the Canadians early. What can they do in the second half? Yeah, slightly disappointed for the Canadians after that win in the heat. The hopes were high. They're right back in the middle of the field there. Great Britain seem to be edging away slightly from Australia. The Netherlands coming back from their position, challenging Australia for second, I think. Well, Mark Prater said to me, I just hope the guys show what they can do. And they are absolutely having the best row of this championships. They were great in Lucerne. I thought this Australian eight even better here in this first thousand metres coming up to the halfway point. A narrow lead for Great Britain, but the Netherlands on the charge here in this near side lane. A real turn up here for the Dutch, just edging themselves up, only a metre down on the Aussies. Britain, Australia, Netherlands, USA, Romania, Canada coming through the thousand, but 
don't look away from this crew here. The USA, a few heads out of the boat there. If they're going to want to get themselves in, they're going to have to keep their heads in the boat, heads down, and away they go. Well, I'm thinking about the crew from the Netherlands. We talked about how well they can finish at the European Championships. They caught that huge boat-stopping crab and then came flying back through the field. They didn't get through Great Britain on that day. Will they be able to find something here? We're coming up about 750 metres to go. It's a fast race. Here they are. They're looking pretty good. I wonder if they'll be able to make a big move on now. They're pretty much, as you can see, bow ball to bow ball with Australia. Great Britain, what's that? Two thirds of a length lead. Abby Viersma, the three man in the Dutch eight, Olympic champion in the quadruple skulls. Just seen there on the left of the pitcher, Nicky van Sprang, formerly of Cal Berkeley, up in the bows, was in the Olympics with Kromenhock in the pair. Now he's in the men's eight and loving every minute of it up in the bow seat riding shotgun. Australia now back in bronze medal position. It's Great Britain's race to lose. Britain still with a commanding lead as they're coming up to the 500 metres to go, but the Dutch looking stronger and stronger. Will they have a sprint in the last 500 here because they seem to be walking through the British crew. The Aussies still in third, but these three crews at the rear of the field are all level. Do they have somewhere to go? Well, here we go. Let's have a look. Harry Brightmore in that coxing seat looks to his right. He can see the Netherlands. He can see them starting to move. That does look like it's half a length. Here we go. Yeah, I haven't seen the British need to use a fantastic sprint at the end. And the Netherlands are riding now. They are going for it. They are edging back on the British. You can see etched on the features of Tom Ford there. Look across from Harry Brightmore. Just signaling jeopardy for the British. I think they're rising to the challenge, the British eight. Let's see what they've got. The British are going to need to rise to the challenge because the Netherlands are coming at them hard. Let's also just have a mind for Australia, who made that great start. The Americans are coming fast. The Canadians will be coming fast. That's the race for the bronze medal. This is the race for the gold medal. Looking to the front of the field, it looks like Australia are getting challenged for that bronze. Here we go. Australia still in the bronze medal position, but here come the Americans. Tom Teha's crew from the USA. Are they going to get themselves in, or do they have... Only 100 metres left, the Americans are charging, but the Australians are in bronze at this stage. Netherlands coming back on the British 8, the line's going to come up too soon for the Netherlands. It is Great Britain who will take another men's sweep goal. Netherlands take a silver, marvellous row from them. Australia, incredible performance to take a bronze medal. USA just back in fourth like they were in the Olympics. Disappointment for Canada in fifth place. And the Romanians back, I think, in sixth place over the far side. Well, what a fantastic race. So much laid on the line. The British there just managed to edge away for that first 1500s, but they will have had a bit of a scare, I think, from Netherlands, the way they came back in the last 500. And you've got to be impressed with that young Australian crew, the way they took it out and held on for the bronze. Really impressive race here, the Dutch. If they got themselves in there a bit earlier, would they have had that in the second half maybe to challenge more but the british they just looked in control all the way down the track i thought out of the start they were so calm they were lower rating than the rest of the crews but they just really had lovely rhythm lovely purchase on the water to me they looked confident all the way down the track what a lovely picture this one is of those six eights all going out together and you just see the real kind of connection calmness and controlled in all the boats really there was no one looking too frantic but the British were just able to deliver what they've delivered all season. Simple pattern, simple rowing, great connections, and uh, that's going to win them the gold medal. Harry Brightmore there, doing a fantastic job in the Cox's seat. Oh, anchored there. Charlie Elways shouting out. Shalta Carnegie raising his hands. Dave Buick Copley up there in the free seat. Just absolutely knackered. Tom Ford congratulating Harry Brightmore. James Rodkin in the seventh seat, head down. Big six man, Tom Digby. Well, there we see it. A 5.24 in pretty still conditions for the Great Britain 8 ahead of the Netherlands and Australia. We will be seeing them later on the medal podium. Great Britain! <laughs> Oh, 